Good morning, everyone. Thank you very much for being here. My name is Matt Cutler. I am founder and CEO of Block Native, and I'm just really happy to be up here with Tom Nash from Flex Steps, uh, who is a, a, not just a friend but business partner. And and we are here to talk with you about um, you got that? Uh, you hand? this whole notion of developing oh, for shit. engagement. You know, engagement. It's that outcome, that sentiment, that conclusion, that behavior. What is engagement anyways? What is it actually? And I think engagement is one of those topics that you sort of know it when you see it. It, it looks like this. Right? This is an actual photo I took of a user engaging with the uh, Web3 wallet here at the summit. And, and it's so difficult to pin down because engagement is rooted in the indeterminate world of end user psychology. It's that mix, that soup of prior experience, preconceived notions, fears, hopes, expectation, aspiration, busyness, complexity. Uh, it's, it's messy and, and it's very difficult to predict. And so the way to pursue engagement in any domain is through methodical experimentation and continuous user validation. To always be looking after to say, are the users exhibiting the behaviors that we need to drive the experience forward? And you gotta walk the walk. It's a full body experience. And this is a photo, an actual photo I took yesterday of Tom and his team providing frontline end user support at the merch table downstairs to someone who had questions about the experience, okay? So this is not something that you just do when you say, oh, you know, we wrote these wireframes at the whiteboard and they're gonna be engaging. There's no way to, to know that. You actually have to build stuff and get it out there. And so what we're going to do over the course of the next 15 minutes or so is Tom is gonna tell you the journey of the Web3 wallet, the surprising story of how we got here today. And uh, not only sort of where it came from, but also what makes it what I believe to be a seminal moment, a high watermark in Web3 user experience and engagement. And at the end of all this, I'm going to invite you all to be part of this journey to not just be passengers along the way, but to be participants, to be uh, builders, to be experimenters, because if we don't do this all together, we are at risk of having one or two large companies monopolize user attention for billions of Web3 users. So this is not an academic topic, and quite frankly, it's not an optional topic. It's a topic of critical importance to the entire ecosystem, and we'd like to share with you what we're building to move it forward. Tom? Thank you, Matt. Good morning. If I've done my job over the past couple of days, you hopefully have seen this URL. Um, hopefully you've visited it. Hopefully you've used some of the features of the Web3 Summit wallet. Maybe you've checked out the schedule for the conference. Maybe you've participated in Dow versus Dow Chess, which, by the way, has been a complete whitewash in favor of the Democrats. Um, and maybe you've kind of run around and shared your conference DNA, which is this kind of strange abstract art piece that we pulled together in a weekend. And I want to make a statement that I think that this user experience, some of the experiences that you can engage with in this wallet, I believe them to be some of the best Web3 enabled crypto cryptocurrency powered experiences that you can access today. But we didn't just pull this application out of thin air. We, over the past three months, have been developing various different applications and various different iterations of this kind of idea of an event engagement application. And the story actually begins, like many good stories, with a joke that got way out of hand. Um, my co-founder Alex and I were throwing a house party to celebrate one year of being a solvent company um, and being somewhat profitable. And we thought, cool, well, because of our giant egos, let's sell pre-sell VIP tickets um, to our house party. So we sold five limited edition VIP tickets 
to our friends on a pay-what-you-want basis. And uh, the average price for one of these tickets was $20. And that was pretty surprising. We didn't expect people to pay that much. And we thought, well, as good humans, we can't just allow people to give us $20 and not deliver for them. So we better build something pretty cool. We better build something pretty spectacular. So we built an app. We built a burner wallet. We built something that allowed people who came to our party to participate in different games and different experiences and these activities that they wouldn't have been able to without the ability of using cryptocurrency. And so this is a, a photograph I took of somebody looking at the VIP list at the current point in time and um, choosing who they were about to eject from the VIP zone by purchasing their ticket from them at 5% more than the price that they paid. Um, and it was really fun. It was an exceptionally fun party. Um, I wrote a big blog post about, about it. I um, highly recommend going and, going and reading it. But essentially, we had to build a wallet for drunk people. And building a crypto wallet for drunk people is pretty tricky. Um, there were about 70 people who came to the party. I estimate maybe half of them had never used cryptocurrency before, let alone on a mobile basis, and let alone whilst quite drunk. But it was great. Here's another one of the applications that was in um, the, the, the party wallet. We had a, a boat racing game where you could choose a boat from a, from a selection, and you could kind of bet some of your flex bucks on the boat, and then you would watch it race across the screen. Um, and if it reached the red line first and didn't get eaten by a squid, then you would win the flex bucks of everyone else who participated. A lot of fun. A lot of people standing and yelling, yelling at the television for many, many hours. And so what did we learn? What did we learn from this kind of weird, fun, kind of qu quite hackathony experiment? Well, we learned that money drives engagement. People leveraging currency and leveraging value within an application drives them to participate with it more. 23% of the transactions in, in the house party, of which there were like 650 over the course of a few hours, 23% of those transactions were, on, were, were because of that boat racing game, were because of this weird, fun, slightly illegal gambling game. Um, speed counts. You know, less might, less might be more. If you, we, we had a, we used a side chain and we had like five second block times for these, for these games, which wasn't perfect, but at the same time wasn't necessarily a huge killer because, you know, drunk people tend to be able to occupy themselves for a few seconds while they're waiting for transactions to go through. But it's not mainnet, you know, it's not what we all want. It's not the, the Web3 vision that we have, which is to, you know, use the, the best of the best of these technologies. But we took a grand total of more than, I think, 1,200 Australian dollars at the door for our house party, which is pretty silly. Um, but it was great. It showed that people are willing to engage with this stuff. People are willing to participate in these new fun experiences that are enabled because of cryptocurrency and because of Web3 tech. Then our next excursion, the next iteration of this idea was a wallet that we built for State of Scale, which is a layer two scaling conference in LA um, about a month ago. And we took the learnings from the wallet at the house party and we were like, okay, people like engaging with games. People like engaging with games that are reactive and quick and involve currency. So let's try to build a game that is quick and reactive and involves currency. And turns out it's quite difficult. We know that state channels are a thing and we know that you know, there is the technology available for us to do this. Turns out that both building an application that allows you to engage with this thing and building a secure and scalable state channel, really, really, really difficult, even when using um, the latest and greatest. Um, so Abridged is an SDK that allows you to build these kind of cool um, payment channel and state channel based applications. We built the Web3 wallet on Abridged. And it's really, really good. It's exceptional, but it's very hard to convey to users what it is that they're doing. If you have a bunch of users like we did at State of Scale who have a payment channel open, they end up with two balances. They have a balance outside of the payment channel and a balance inside the payment channel. And they need balance outside of the payment channel to be able to withdraw the balance inside of the payment channel. But they don't always need balance inside of the payment channel. And it's very, 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 very confusing and, and quite vexing almost. And 
if you're a user, you don't want to have to learn about this stuff. You're there to have fun. You're there to, there to play games. You don't want to, your experience to be encompassed or enveloped by having to learn about what it is that you're participating in. You want it to be self-explanatory. And so from the experiment at state of scale, we learned that preparation is really, really key. We spent about three weeks um, building that wallet. I didn't show you all of it, but it looked very similar to the house body wallet. Um, preparation is really key. Knowing what it is that your users are going to participate in, it's very, very important. We tried to marry this experiment with some ups at the event as well and tried to get people to pay for food with the wallet, with the payment channel, but it turns out if you put food in front of people and then give them a barrier to the food that is completely arbitrary, they're not very happy. Um, and showing people two separate balances that they have to keep track of that do completely separate things that are very hard to reconcile in their mind is very, very difficult. But we wanted to use payment channels for the Web3 Summit wallet. We wanted to use technology that made the transaction experience really seamless and instantaneous. And so we thought, okay, well, we've got to scrap the whole thing. We've got to redesign it from the ground up. So four weeks ago, we threw out everything that we'd built, and we thought, okay, let's start again. So the day after State of Scale, I'm sat there in LA, and I'm ripping apart everything that I've made. I'm redrawing all of the designs on Figma. And this thing has to be perfect. I don't want to make any compromises. I don't want users to have to go through this complicated onboarding flow where they're having to learn about the technologies that they're interacting with. I want it to be self-explanatory. And I think we nailed it. If you have used the app over the past couple of days and you've purchased anything through the app with cryptocurrency, did you realize you were using payment channels? Did you realize that you were using some of the, the best technology that we have available to us? I would hazard a guess that you probably didn't, which is good. That's exactly how I want you to feel. They, the purchase experience with crypto is better than the purchase, ex purchase experience with credit card. If you didn't have enough cryptocurrency, when you tapped on a merch item, it would come up and say, enter your credit card details. It's much easier to have topped up your wallet previously and just be buying these things with crypto payments. It's really seamless. And you may have also participated in DAO versus DAO chess, which is really, really fun. Um, I was a plutocrat yesterday and got wrecked. Um, and these fun, experimental governance models that we are extolling the virtues of and, and talking about as these, you know, hey, we should be experimenting with these things and we should be figuring out whether they're better at governing systems than, um, you know, traditional government governance models, are very hard oftentimes to engage with or to get your users to engage with because they're quite inaccessible. If you want people to learn about decentralized governance, Currently, you have to point them to a protocol like Maker, which is very, very complicated and very hard to get involved in. But you could be teaching your users about decentralized governance with something like chess or something like DAO Plays Pokemon, which we built for an EdCon hackathon, which hopefully will make a resurgence quite soon. So if you want to learn more about how we built this thing and the thoughts that are behind it and the technology that we used, I highly recommend checking out this blog post that I wrote a couple days ago. Um, yeah, please, please do that. And from the first couple days of the conference, the last two days, we've learned um, a couple of things that I think are really poignant and that I would like to um, highlight. One of those being that even exceptionally savvy users, even people here at the Web3 Summit who I would consider, and I'm sure many of you would consider, some of the most engaged and switched on people in Web3 don't necessarily demand full control of their assets at all times. People deposited money into the Web3 Summit wallet without the capability of withdrawing it yet. You haven't actually built that. You're going to build it later today. <laughs> um, they, it's, it's really tempting as a developer in the Web3 ecosystem to be giving your users full control over absolutely everything that they do but it's also really difficult to marry that with good UX. It's, ex it's insanely difficult. 
And if you can meet, meet your users in the middle, it might be the best of both worlds. If you use a, a DAP currently, even with MetaMask or even with a DAP browser, and you click a button that makes a transaction, you get this little pop-up and it says, hey, confirm this. You probably don't read what's in that pop-up anyway. And the user is probably trusting the fact that you've crafted a, a correct transaction. So maybe we can just pull that barrier a little further back and ask the user to pre-commit instead of having to confirm each and every time. Payment channels are so quick that they don't get noticed. Um, not, it's, it's really interesting. Not a single person has asked about, you know, what's the technology that powers the crypto payments in the application, um, which is in stark contrast to the wallet that we built for our house party, which was attended by far fewer people and people who were not necessarily, su not necessarily super engaged with the Web3 ecosystem, they were asking, hey, how do you do these payments? How does it work to use a side chain, this kind of stuff? But nobody here has asked, like, how did these payments function, which I think is really interesting. And as of this morning, um, when I pulled the figures, over 650 US dollars has been spent within the app just with cryptocurrency. That's not counting any of the fiat payments for the merch. Um, or any of the funds that are still in people's wallets that are yet to be withdrawn or spent. So, with that, um, I would like to hand you back to Matt. Um, I appreciate the time. Please engage with the wallet, maybe participate in Dow Chess today, but watch out, I might Sybil attack the democracy for fun. <laughs> um, and yeah, thank you very much for listening. Uh, thank you for that, and, and I think the work that, that Tom and his team have put in to advance the state of the art of these experiences um, are worthy of, of recognition and applause. Uh, one of the things that was sort of implied in those slides was that progression from the house party burner wallet through state of scale to Web3 Summit is four months, three months? Three right? months. And so we're on this journey. We're, we're on this journey together, and I think if you have, how many of you out there have used the Web3 wallet? during the summit, right? It sort of felt like it belonged. It didn't feel like it was something like worthy of anything other than like, this is a great utility that helps me get the job done here at Web3 Summit. And the fact that the technology is now going from being exotic to being invisible is, is really a watershed moment in the ecosystem and the industry. Um, it is now becoming possible to build these next generation experiences and each and every one of you have an integral role to play in this. And we want to invite you along for this journey. At the simplest thing, if you're part of this ecosystem and you've enjoyed using the Web3 Summit wallet or you've enjoyed what you heard here today, please tell people about it, really. Because our observation is the concepts of experience and engagement um, could really use some more awareness across the ecosystem. Um, these are fundamental topics that we need to advance if we're going to fulfill the promise and onboard billions of users into the Web3 ecosystem you have a role to play. Beyond that, of course, uh, jump in, form hypotheses, run experiments, um, and publish your results. Uh, one of the things that, that we think is really integral to the, the state of the art and user experience in this space is that everybody shares their successes and failures, just like Tom did here today with metrics, because that's the only way we're going to all move forward collectively. Uh, this domain of, of engagement is so big and so vast that we can't leave it, nor do we want to leave it to any one company or one group to explore the state of the art. These techniques, these technologies, these approaches must be democratized and shared across our ecosystem. So if you're into this, experiment and share your results. Um, the great thing is there's a lot of new technology, a lot of new frameworks that are enabling these next generation experiences. We at Block Native are powering part of that. The guys at Abridge are powering that and there's a bunch of other innovation happening. So jump on board those tools, use them and push the state of the art forward. It could not be a more important and more critical time to do so. 
So in summary, we just want to thank everybody for being here, and we particularly want to thank um, the Web3 Summit team for being great partners and, and coming along for this ride and letting us experiment and innovate. There is so much more we have to do. If you really looked at the Web3 Summit wallet, you will see that there's clearly areas for future innovation. And Tom and I are going to stick around outside for questions and comments, but otherwise, have a great rest of the day. Thanks, guys.